relationship these days, a romantic relationship, is incredibly complicated. And it's no wonder there's a lot of frustration out there. And if you're a woman who feel like you keep meeting men who won't commit, and you might be asking yourself, have you been used? Well, we're going to dive into that today. So I want to share a personal story. Um, I was in the jacuzzi recently at the complex I live in. When I started to chat with some men, it was guys in there. Uh, there was four guys, and I ended up talking to three of them. By the time I got around sharing I was a dating and relationship coach, the conversation got rather steamy. Now, just to give you some context, the men ranged in age of about late 30s till about 50s is my, my guess. I didn't ask them in particular. But as they were sharing some of their experiences and asking for my opinion, I thought that would be a great conversation to lean into today. So one man in particular was sharing the story where he recently dated a woman for about, I'm guessing it was almost just shy of three months. Okay. Now they happen to live relatively close to one another. And their first date uh, was they had a date one week. And then the second week they saw each other two times. And the third week they saw each other two times. And I think on average, they were seeing each other for about this three married of three month period of time of about two to maybe three times per week. And I asked him, when did they have sex? And he said it was around the third uh, week of them connecting with one another. And at first he was very attracted to her. She was very attracted to him. There seemed like there was some sexual chemistry between the two of them. And at the same time, the more he got to know her, he, he, he explained that he thought that she had, um, now I put these words in his mouth because he said she was emotionally unavailable. And I did, I asked, did she seem avoidant? Did she seem, um, you know, challenging with expressing emotions. And he kept nodding his head. And so as we dove deeper and he just found that she wasn't very communicative, she was very passive. And he found himself after about the fifth or sixth week, I believe it is, no, the sixth week, he was like, you know what? I'm not sure I'm really liking this person, but he thought he'd give it a little bit more of a chance. And then a few weeks later, he ended the relationship. Okay. And she was visibly upset because she became attached to him and he recognized that this wasn't his person. And as I shared this, or as he was sharing this, the other guys were saying, wow, the same thing has happened to me. I've been with women who aren't very expressive. They're very, there's a, a level of walls up. There's even a level of being cold. And while maybe in the beginning, there was that little bit of chemistry, that little bit of limerence, they found in each case, these men were sharing, they just realized that after about two to three or four months, they just weren't that into this person. So it got me thinking because we would oftentimes, we view these experiences as men using women. And yet these men seemed very sincere. They seemed very, um, you know, conscious. Uh, they seemed like men of good character. I don't know them very well. They were sharing from their lens, from their experience. So obviously it's one-sided, but occurs to me, and I've even talked to my son about this in the past, where he said he spent time with a woman only to realize that he didn't have the type of feelings that he was hoping to have after three or four months. So this begs the question, in the dating process, it's a getting to know you process where you're trying to, well, you're hoping to build a connection with someone, but more importantly, you're hoping to build deep intimacy with someone. Now, someone says they are liars. Kimberly says that. You know, I'm here to say, Kimberly, these men seemed really sincere. And so when we hear the opposite from women where they've spent time with men and they weren't just that into them after a period of time, well, this can work in reverse as well. There are plenty of women who have an avoidant attachment style. And if you're not familiar with attachment styles, I highly recommend reading the book, um, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. By the way, all the books I recommend are listed below. Believe it or not, there's a significant percentage of women who have an, uh, have an avoidant attachment style, means they're very fearful of love, and oftentimes they put up blocks, they put up walls. And with these particular men, whether they were anxious attachment style or maybe secure attachment style, these men, or maybe they were avoidant, 
Oh, and by the way, I highly recommend reading this book so you can understand the three primary attachment styles, anxious, avoidant, secure. There's actually um, additional ones within there, but those are the three that we oftentimes focus on. Women can be avoidant as well, and many men are seeking connection, especially those men at midlife. So my point being is, or, or maybe not enough, even though you've been physically intimate with someone, you like this person, but at the end of the day, there can be a lot of personality differences between two people. There can be communication style differences. There can be differences of sense of humor that require spending time with someone to determine whether or not they're a good fit for you. See, but here's the real challenge. You see, a good relationship, recogn or let me say this, two people who are genuinely sincere about being in a fully committed relationship, they genuinely like each other, they genuinely are attracted to each other, have to recognize that relationships are incredibly complicated. And what I mean to say is this fantasy we live in that the perfect person just fits like a glove doesn't exist. Even within my own sweetheart, there's a picture of Marie and I, we have differences in the way we operate. And we have to navigate these differences to actually make this relationship work. We have to communicate with well with one another. And believe it or not, many women are just as poor at communication as men, okay? Now, I'm here to say there are plenty of cases where women, these women I was talking about with respect to these men, they might, felt, felt, they might have felt like they were used by these men when in all fairness, they just weren't a fit for one another. This happens frequently. And I just want to just bring your awareness to something. Do you realize that, I, I think it was a therapist, I was reading something recently from a therapist that something like 60 to 70 to 75% of all relationships end. Now, let's think about this for a second. Roughly about 40 to 50% of all marriages end in divorce. A roughly 60 to 65 percent of second marriage, second marriages end in divorce, and roughly 75 percent of third marriages end in divorce. Okay, so those are the ones who got married. What about all the people that are dating? They begin a relationship with one another, and then it doesn't work out. This is happening habitually every minute of every day. I am sure there's a new relationship being formed every 22 seconds, and there's a breakup happening every 21 seconds. And I'm just being tongue in cheek here. My point in bringing this up is, See, this is all a matter of understanding who's truly compatible with you so you can have better results. And this is where I see a poor job of vetting by women because women tend to have a propensity of wanting partnership more so than men. Men after divorce, and since my audience is the over 40 crowd, which roughly 75% of the population who is single over 45 years old is most likely divorced, that's anecdotal, by the way. A lot of men are gun shy. Women tend to have a greater propensity to want commitment more so than men. I don't know exactly that percentage, but they tend to most often. So if men are gun shy and women seek relationship, then it's incumbent upon you to spot the men who are unable to commit. And if you need some help and support with that, right there's a link. Schedule a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. And there'll be a link in the first comment when this video is over and also in the description of this video to connect with me. Okay, really quickly, I see one of you wrote, thank you for responding, but I'm talking about a real narcissist I've known for many years. Love your programs, Jonathan. Okay, yes, there are plenty of narcissists out there. At the same time, the term narcissist gets thrown about. Now, let me give you an example of this. I once dated a woman. This was back uh, 2016. We met through Facebook. We met for drinks uh, one night. And as we, uh, I remember our second date, I, she had been married before. And I said, what happened in your marriage? And she was married to a famous drummer in a rock and roll band. She said, he was a narcissist. And I'm like, well, 
you know, people, you know, in that industry might be. And I said, what happened to the last man you dated? And she goes, oh, he was a narcissist. And I said, what happened to the man before that you dated? And she goes, oh, he was a narcissist. In fact, if I was keeping a tally, I think she had five or six narcissists in her life. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not a narcissist. I'll be her hero. Well, sure enough, just like those men we were speaking of, we, I, we dated for about six weeks. Yes, we did have sex together. And I realized she wasn't much fun to be with. She was our, our personalities were totally different. Our communication styles were different. Our our sense of humor were different. And I thought, you know what? It's better to cut. I'm going to say my cut my losses now. And I ended the relationship. Do you know what that you know what, what ended up happening on Facebook the next day? Bold letters. I just broke up with another narcissist. I'm like, I got labeled a narcissist. Just and, and so my point is, for the person that wrote, a lot of men get labeled a narcissist just because they end a relationship with you or they were a little bit self-serving. The reality is, is most humans are a bit self-centric in their dating practices because it's about we, we, we as a society hyper-focus on our own needs more so than actually putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. So how do we spot the men who are commit, commitment oriented versus the ones who are going to use you? And when I say use you, there's the perception of being used and actually being used. So a player, somebody who is habitually dating multiple women at the same time, he's using you. How do you spot that guy? He's non-committal from the very get-go. He doesn't want commitment. He clearly says, I'm not looking for a relationship. Now, the fact is, is players can say they're looking for a relationship. Here's where you have to pin them down. What's your definition of a relationship? See, my definition of a relationship is spending three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in your personal and your professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That's the standard I was looking for. But Jonathan, I'm in a long distance relationship. We've been talking habitually on our phones for the last five to six months. And we've never met with one another. What am I supposed to do? Folks, let me tell you something. A significant percentage of you are engaging in cyber relationships. Cyber relationships can lead down many rabbit holes. One is a person wasting your time. Number two, they can use you as their therapist. Number three, <laughs> I recently read a comment on one of my posts. She said, it's like emotional prostitution, this coming back to the therapist comment, you know? So first off, if you want a relationship to take off, then you're physically going to have to see each other on a regular basis. This casual cyber relationships rarely ever work out for the long run. So if you want to be able to spot a man who can commit, you got to find those men where you can physically see them on average of a couple times a week at the bare minimum to form a healthy, happy relationship with someone. Because a, now a player only makes a limited amount of time for you. Marie talks about a friend of hers that has what he calls the Monday girl, the Tuesday girl, the Wednesday girl, and the, uh, the girl he reserves for weekends. Please forgive my terminology for girl. That was her language, not mine. Okay. The, so... With that said, what else, what other signs can we spot a man unable to commit? He's going through a, half, a significant divorce or he's going through a breakup or he just went through a breakup. He has a contentious relationship with his ex. He has troubles in his professional life. He's got health issues. What we're really talking about when the ground underneath a person isn't very solid they might engage in a relationship with someone. They might even be monogamous and exclusive. However, that ground underneath them gives them an exit clause for ending a relationship. You see, a man who's ready to commit, the life, his, the ground underneath him is relatively solid. That includes he's not going through a contentious divorce. He's, his professional life is in order. 
And for the most part, he's got, if he has children, there's not a lot of drama going on within his ex or his family, that sort of thing. Those are all solid sign he has the capacity to commit and he certainly can't use it as his exit clause. Now, sadly, when a man uses that as an exit clause, the reality is, is your relationship didn't build the deep roots of trust to support the relationship. But Jonathan, I'm told I should just lean back in my feminine energy and let a man lead because anytime I make any effort, I'm in my masculine energy. I was watching another uh, video, or was watching a video this morning from a woman coach that says when a woman is in, in her anxiety, she is in her masculine energy. Wow. So does that mean when a man's in anxiety, he's in his masculine energy and we all know how much you love masculine energy, man? I'm being rhetorical, of course. Folks, when a person is in, in a state of anxiety, that is not, neither masculine or feminine. If someone is trying to get a bid for attention, that's neither masculine or feminine. That's just a person that isn't feeling love because they haven't built the deep roots of trust. One of the things we work on in my private coaching, and by the way, I just got an email from a client. Um, maybe I should share this with you all. Bear with me one second. I just want to pull this up. It's going to take me a second to find it. I hope I can find it. Uh, bear with me. Come on, Jonathan, find this email. Okay, here we go. Actually, let me show you this one. Okay. Here's a woman who just worked with me over a year ago. I'm all excited to show you the engagement ring. Here's a picture of her and her guy. And what she wrote, there's another picture with her and her guy. Can you see that? Hope you can. Very excited for her. And what she said was, hey, Jonathan, got me the most emotionally available, loving, vulnerable man ever. He even watches your videos and other personal development uh, stuff that I turned him on to. He wasn't ready when we first started dating last year, but came back with a vengeance and has been so good to me. All the cards are on the table. We talk about values and standards and boundaries and finances and habits and traumas. We're aligned. We tested ourselves by traveling together. He's also a badass man who's six foot five and I'm five foot two. It's a bonus he's hot. Our wedding date is 2024. I share this with you because she followed my, my, my recipe for success. That is learning how to establish true compatibility with one another. Many of you do such a poor job at this. It's no wonder you feel like you're being used. And in addition, I taught her the skills through radical honesty, what I call pre-qualifying your prospect, but more importantly, to determine his emotional maturity. And this is a guy who watches my videos. So what's interesting, I see a common thread with the women who work with me. They all say the same thing. Jonathan, I turned the men on to the work we've done together, and it has been gold because so many men are actually thirsty for some type of emotional connection. Believe it or not, as much as you might think that men are users and players, but a significant percentage of men actually seek a fully committed relationship. However, there are a lot of dysfunctional men out there. Yes, they have childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that make it very difficult for them to lean into a healthy, happy relationship if the ground underneath them isn't solid. How can you spot these men? I highly recommend reading the book, The Hoffman Process, The Hoffman Process. This will be a deep dive for you to observe your own negative patterns and limiting beliefs in life that cause you, or excuse me, your childhood wounds and traumas that cause you to have negative patterns and limiting beliefs in your life. Again, there's a link below. It really piggybacks my own book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? So are you being used or is he just not, not the, is, is he experiencing you're not the right woman for him? Here's the reality. A lot of men, just like you women, don't know what they want. They really don't. This is why I'm here to say, ladies, 
You can sit in your feminine energy and wait for a guy to lead. But here's the thing. You are in charge of your relationship destiny. Don't leave that to men. Most men are winging it. Your job is to vet for compatibility and ask the deeper questions and also to lead by example to develop emotional maturity in the relationship. If you're not familiar with the book, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters, I highly recommend reading this book. See, many of you think you're good at this stuff. You're not. How do I know this? I'm just working with a client today. I am so happy that the work we did together has now taken her relationship that was a so-so and now has built the deeper roots of trust that they're actually leaning into partnership now. See, she didn't know what the hangup was. Many of you are with men. You don't know what the real hangup is. All you're doing is complaining about what's wrong instead of observing what positive things am I learning about myself in this relationship? What is good and what am I grateful for? And how can we um, recognize that we both aren't perfect for another, perfect for one another, and yet are we willing to invest in one another? And it requires deeper conversations to get there. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Um, all right. I think you get the gist of differentiating between the men who didn't use you, they just didn't think you were fit for them, versus the men who are most likely going to use you. Those are the men whose lives aren't very stable and you're going to feel used because these men are only capable of occasional companionship, occasional sex, occasional connection without that deep need for commitment. And we have to work on determining who those men are. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Please post to comment below. If this did resonate with you, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit that notification bell as well.